Thank you to Every Plate for sponsoring this week's video and for feeding our family tonight. With our busy life, we're always looking for cost-effective, healthy ways to feed our family. This year, you can count on Every Plate to make your mealtime easier. Every Plate helps you save time and money with delicious, affordable recipes delivered right to your door. With a brand new year, maybe one of your New Year's resolutions is to expand your cooking skills, save money by skipping takeout, or finding more free time. Every Plate can help you accomplish this with easy-to-follow recipes you can whip up in a few simple steps and in under 30 minutes. They have include pictures to help keep you on track. It's cheaper than your average fast casual meal and it feels great to know exactly what you and your family are eating. Every plate recipes include only the highest quality ingredients so you know your meals will be fresh and tasty till the very last bite. Every plate is up to 56% cheaper than other leading meal kits and you get so much bang for your buck. No wonder it's America's best value meal kit. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.39 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code REDPOPPYRANCH139. The snow is just not letting up and it's hard to plow when you can't see where your plow actually is. So I need to get some new corner markers installed on both the skid steer as well as the new plow truck. And then of course, there's snow to plow. As much as I want to be working on the shop edition, there's snow that must be plowed. And by installing the new snow plow markers, I should be able to see what I'm doing that much better. The big question is, how long are they going to last? In between the snowstorms, I've done my best to sneak down and pick up what materials I need for the shop edition to continue. And once I get this three quarter inch plywood secured to the second story, I'm gonna figure out those stairs. I went out of my way to try and build a cantilevered landing right here for the stairs, which meant I needed even longer floor joists to support the landing. Yeah. 
After all the hard work and effort I put into this landing, you're going to see a little bit later in this video that it was basically unnecessary. But once this part of the addition is done, I will then start on the loft, and that's more than likely where the stairs are going to have to tie in. A few weeks back when my lovely wife Cedar and myself were talking about the addition out here, she actually asked me if we should hire an architect to draw up some plans. My response to her was, for sure this is something a grown-up adult would do before a project like this, but that takes all the fun out of it for me. I have found that some architects are lacking one thing, and that is real-life application. So this is why I do most architectural work in the moment with a tape measure, and also why I get to fix things twice sometimes. If this is to be the last house that I ever live in, is it so wrong to make a few changes as things change down the road? The answer is no. Most people just aren't willing to do it. I, on the other hand, am willing to do it as many times as it takes until I'm happy with it. In a best case scenario, I would do it once and only once. Like most of these projects around here, I put a lot of thought into this, but that doesn't mean that things can't change on the fly when changes may need to be made. And this is about the moment where I realized that the landing that I've worked so hard to build probably isn't going to work. So the idea is that all of the stuff that I would normally keep right here in the shop, Cedar and I are going to go through and likely organize in those black and yellow containers that she likes so much. But then we're going to put them on some industrial shelving that goes from floor to ceiling on the other side of the shop. And the hope is that we can turn this back corner into where the pool table is going to be, maybe an arcade game, maybe shuffleboard, something like that to offer a little bit of entertainment to our family and whoever happens to be here with us. Once the shop is completely finished, I'm going to have to be a little bit more picky about what projects I take on out here in the shop. I don't know if I want to be cutting and grinding and sending carbon all over this project that I worked so hard to build. And that also means that i got to stay organized from now on. Uh-oh. I'm going to leave all the rat, all the floor joists exposed underneath. Uh, so you're just going to leave this area out or is this where like the little kitchenette could be? So I just, we just have to make some decisions on it. I don't want any exposed water lines. Yeah. Um, like I, I got a, the tankless water heater that I'm going to put out here. I have to hide that. I'm going to make the bathroom pretty cool. Yeah, remember that high tank toilet? What? I, I don't know what happened to that toilet. That toilet we hauled around. Probably because we moved it 17 times, you got rid of it. I know it came here. I know it came here. I know it went to a storage unit, and I can't find it now. Yeah, the door goes in the bedroom here. It's going to be that size. That's Swings a 32-inch door. Yeah. Have the door swing in. This door, same thing, swings in. There, you know. There's I, 50 million suggestions about pocket doors. And I can't do a pocket door with the plumbing right there. That's part of part of the yeah. issue. 
Like, I may have to... Where's the storage gonna go? There might be much. I can, I can either do a, some sort of a cabinet right here. Yeah, you're gonna have to for towels and... Um, yeah, there's not gonna be a ton of storage out here. You know, I, I thought about building a closet right here, or, or cabinets extra, right here. Extra toilet paper, towels, whatever. And then the other issue, Cedar, is to make this really a safe bedroom, there should be a window. A, a, a real egress window where a fire escape. So I'm gonna have to, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm gonna have to put a window. Probably the same same size four or uh, three uh, three oh I can't remember what it is. I don't, I don't think that's bad. It's just more light. Yeah, let, let just... some early morning light. Do does it need to be a king size bed? No, just do a queen, it's right? A queen, yeah. A, a king would take up this whole room. Where would you put the bed? Like over here on this wall? Um, I probably put it right there. Far wall? So, yeah. Insulated this, insulation and then this will have insulation. The outside of this, I'm probably going to do in plywood, and then it's going to have some siding or something, whatever. However, I want to dress it up. But I wanted, I truly wanted to do the old saloon doors somewhere because my grandpa had them. Do you remember the old Second Avenue house? Do you remember that? Yeah. Had I don't remember. I think my parents may have taken them down, but as a kid, there were saloon doors back there. What are you going to do up here? Dry, fly, bedroom, same thing, same yeah. thing. and I don't, I haven't put any thought into flooring up here. Another bedroom, comparable in size to this. Um, because this this wall, it'll go clear to the ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. You could do this wall, your tool wall, your old antique tool wall. Oh, like the outside of it? Uh -huh. Well, if I did that, I guess I'd keep kids from messing with them. I was gonna put some of them in this room on little shelves and have a little brass tag or something. But anyway. You're making it <laughs> good. Get him, Willie. No, don't get the kitty, Willie. She'll smack Willie, you upside the head, buddy. Come, come here. here, Willie. Come here. Anyway, come here. she doesn't want you. She doesn't want you by her. It should Willa. be. It really should be safe and secure. I haven't even sheared it yet because everything is secured to the. Uh, the building, I really, really need to shear it here pretty quick. <laughs> Wherever we end up putting the door, whether it's over there or here, it doesn't really matter. But like, we could do something with this little pocket, some cabinets out here, maybe some. I say, I still say you put it out here. What about like an old Hoosier pie safe or something right here that you could put uh, towels, you could put cleaner, you could put whatever in out here. I'm, I may incorporate some of the corrugated tin into some of the. Background or something, I don't know. Kind of give you the appearance you're looking up at an old tin roof when you're sleeping. <laughs> I don't know. So it was six o'clock, you said, and the dogs ran off. So let's see if they come back a little fast. Last time they were gone for about an hour, what, hour and a half or something. I can't believe they looked at me like that. I screamed at them, bad dogs. I, I yelled at them, bad dogs. Said, no, no, no. They knew they were bad they dogs. They took off as fast as they could. Every muscle in Ruby's body was. Yeah, they know. That's. I, I true I think part of our reaction is why they run mm -hmm. off. So hopefully they do come right back. You but. gave me the dirtiest look, the stinker. If I have to, I'm gonna ha I may have to move that landing back because I just cut it off and move put I put the longer that. because I, I I wasn't sure how where the stairs were gonna yourself. hit. If the stairs end up hitting right here and end up being a trip hazard, I'm gonna have to. Okay, I'll finish up there and I'll come in. All right, the next major part of this project is gonna be getting these stairs built. And I don't want the stairs to hang out past the wall and be a, a potential trip hazard. My thoughts were I would, I would build it, see where the landing needs to be, and then if I need to move a rafter or two and put shorter rafters in there, it's not that hard because I use deck screws to put it together, other than the fact that I just glued down that plywood. So tomorrow my focus is gonna be all on the stairs, but tonight I wanna finish getting all of the plywood down uh, so it can be drying, and then tomorrow, stairs and then shear the outside and then i've got to start making some plumbing decisions and then some electrical and then i got to start on the bedroom up here so If I went down the list of all the projects that I have planned to do here around the place, 
and if I had to explain to you why I want to do these projects, all that I can tell you is almost all of these projects have something to do with making the place more enjoyable for the friends and family that come and spend time here. Of course there's some fencing and some things that I hope to do around livestock, but ultimately what's the point of doing this if I can't share it with the people I care about? So whether it's campgrounds or a tree house or another small cabin somewhere, we're always going to be doing something to create another fun place for our friends and family to come and stay. But after going through one of the hardest winters that we've ever had, I can see where I need to make improvements again. I can see that the animals that we have, their living conditions probably need to be reevaluated. So the snow isn't even gone yet and it seems already I'm behind on summer projects. But I need to get the shop completely finished up from top to bottom. Electrical, plumbing, inspections, everything that needs to be done so I can button up the walls, get the roof insulated, and forget about it. As much as I like my new Milwaukee nailer, the gun doesn't seem to like the ring shank nails that I'm using, and about every fifth nail has to be cut off because it can't be pulled out and it can't be driven in. But other than that, it's wonderful not hearing a compressor trying to keep up with a nail gun. I'm going to use the back two walls of the shop for the back two walls of the bedroom, but I still have to frame up two more walls on the other corner. But because I'm using the shop's walls, this room's actually going to end up being a little bit bigger than I anticipated. But in order for the bedroom to be livable, it must have a fire escape in the form of a window, and the window needs to be the proper size. So at some point I have to add a window to this bedroom.
Now that the second story decking is all nailed off, the next step is to figure out these stairs and to figure out if I can use any part of this landing or if the whole thing will end up getting cut off. Okay, now that I am done plowing snow, I'm gonna kinda of give you a once over here on, on where I'm at before I dive into these stairs. I, I, for the next day or so, I'm just gonna focus on these stairs until I get them hammered out. So this supports the second story until the framing down here picks up. All of the floor joists, I extended all the way on through. And then on the back end, I doubled up a couple of them to give it even more uh, stiffness. So we're good to go as far as that's concerned, but the big issue is, and I need to move the pool table out of the way here. The big issue is how, how far the stairs gonna hang out. I need to uh, make sure the stairs are safe. They can't be too steep. I'm afraid I may have to cut one of those rafters off and actually extend it a little bit. If I end up building a loft, I can, I can extend that landing a little bit. So that's what I gotta figure out. I've gotta lay out the, uh, I've gotta lay out the stairs and just see how this is gonna work out. And I never really got along with any stairs that I've had to build. Okay, that's 35 degrees, which is the most that code um, typically wants your stairs. Now again, I'm not gonna have any framing inspected out here so I could do whatever stairs I wanted to, I guess, but if there's people that are gonna be staying upstairs, the stairs need to be safe. So 35 degrees, if I leave that landing where it's at, that, that means the stairs are gonna hit all the way out here. What I'm gonna do is cut the two by 12 off so it's sitting actually where it would sit. And then I have to figure out if that landing that I worked so hard to build is actually gonna have to go away. This may have been an ideal time to have a set of plans that I could pull some measurements off of and ultimately avoid having to tear my landing off and start over from scratch. But again, I choose to do things my way and this is what my way looks like. The good news is I've got that half sheet of plywood that I was looking for earlier. On our next video I'm going to be working really hard to get these stairs completely finished and then we're going to start on that second story bedroom and then the electrical and the plumbing.
We hope you guys are safe and warm, and we will see you in just a few days with an update on my fabulous stairs. I just spent like the two hours plowing snow, but it's snowing enough that I have to jump in the Bobcat and do something up our driveway and, and to make sure I can get up the driveway next door. Uh, but this is a bunch of snow. Like I said, I've already spent probably two hours this morning. I'll probably spend another two hours. It's gonna ruin most of my day, I'm guessing. So much snow. I worked late last night trying to get these stairs figured out. I even flip-flopped it to the other side just to kind of play with the angles a little bit. And I was hoping to get more done today and actually uh, put a little bit more on this video. And I, I was hoping to get the stairs done. Uh, but between plowing snow and between other obligations, I went to my son's uh, basketball game this morning, which is probably more important than these stairs right now. So you're gonna have to wait till the next video for me to get this figured out. But on our next video, the stairs will be finished and I will be framing up the bedroom upstairs and maybe if all goes well, I'll be on to electrical and plumbing. So thank you guys for hanging in here with me.